uh, first and obligatory step, this is calibration. Uh, and with this process now, we calibrate parameters of the device. So we shift them to one and the same level. When do we need to make calibration? First of all, when you move from one area to another area. Because we are strongly influenced by humidity, by altitude, by uh, some atmospheric conditions. So when, for example, when we had uh, instruments produced in Hong Kong, and then we, uh, it was, they were shipped to uh, Colorado, uh, to Boulder, and we start check, and we found that it's absolutely different parameters. Because in Hong Kong, you have 80% humidity, and plus, uh, plus 90 degrees all the time. Here, you understand it's maybe 10% of humidity, and temperature inside the room, it's maybe 60, 70. So this is huge difference. That's why parameter was different. Um, if you go from one place to another, then again, you can have this difference. Maybe not that dramatic, but some. Uh, that's why if we want to have consistent data worldwide, and of course with your own patients, with your own measurements, that you need to make calibrations. So we recommend to do it no, maybe once a month, once a week, whatever you want, whatever you decide. What is the calibration control? The amount of electric spark that you create? Uh, you see, uh, no, uh, technically we just regulate voltage. Sorry? Uh, technically, we regulate voltage inside the coil. Okay. That's technically. Okay. So, physically, uh, I will show you how parameters look like. Let me show it to you step by step. This, you see, this is our internal program that we use uh, in the production line, in testing line, uh, to test every instrument. And you see, uh, when instrument is connected to a computer, we read a serial number that every instrument has individual serial number. That's why we can track every instrument in the world. And we have very clear limitation. One account, one instrument. Uh, because it was some unpleasant situations when uh, people been using together one account and uh, it was very unpleasant discussion with the company. Uh, so please keep it in mind. If you want to test several instruments. We have a special account for this. We don't have Blackboard. No, we don't have. Um, and this account is... Uh, uh, hmm? If hmm? we raise the screen, ah, we have a It's over there. Okay, but... Okay, so we need to prepare maybe later on. So uh, this account reads as distra, distra, from the word distribution. But the, and you can make measurements over there, but every 20 hours, all the data will be erased. So it's impossible to save data there. So if you need to test someone's instrument, you can make it over there, just to test, to show how it works. For example, if you have uh, clients, customers, if you want to sell instrument, you can use this account and test every instrument. But then uh, data would not be saved there, you understand this? Okay, so, and look, if we take image of metal uh, cylinder, and we are using very specially designed titanium cylinder. You know, the titanium, it is a material that uh, we use in Russia for uh, submarines. So titanium, is that what you said? Yes, titanium, yes, titanium. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, one of the materials that never correct, correct in, in the air. So it can stay for millenniums in the same way. Uh, while uh, silver, gold, they will oxidate and they change their properties. So uh, metals like the titanium, tungstrum, molybden, they are uh, from the group, they are, don't interfere with environment. That's why we use titanium. And as in Russia, we have many submarines mm -hmm. created from titanium, then it's very easy because its material is one of the most light metals. So you see, first of all, we need to have image like this. So you see, it should be very uh, precise circle with no noise inside. And to make it, you need to 
uh, take this um, uh, cylinder and very carefully position it on the surface. And that's why we use this stand, because it allows us to uh, have uh, optical lens in horizontal position. And so we have all parameters. We have area, you see. We have in uh, intensity, all measurement. We are measuring spectrum, and we know all parameters of the spectrum. And we can, if we need, we can change parameter manually. Or uh, in automatic mode, it's done automatically. So that means if we go to the program, by well, and I think I don't need to explain how to download software or do I need? No, it's understandable, it's clear. Let's skip it. So if we go to program, we have calibration button. And we just press start. And then we need to see that uh, image uh, should be good. Should we follow along with you as we're doing this? Uh, you see, I plan that tomorrow will all of us will be training. Yes, yes, yes. Then I will be able to walk around and see and help. Would you define noise? You said there shouldn't be any noise on the inside. Uh, you see, we have inside, you have blank area. If you have some red areas inside, red dots, many red dots, it means noise. This we name as, no, as noise. So you would consider that clean? Yeah, that's clean. Yeah, okay. clean. And you see, it takes time. Because what is done, uh, first system measures all parameters, and then they define how those parameters are related to standard parameters then they may change parameters of the device in step-by-step -step process. That's why it may take time up to 20 minutes. Here, you see, it took us just a couple of minutes because those devices, they were well calibrated, so nothing changed. Uh, but I, again, please keep in mind, in some cases, it may take up to 20 minutes. So that is done. Now we can close and we can go to other uh, measurements. Important moment. Before you make this calibration, you need to clean the surface. And we have special claws. In some cases, you need to use some liquid uh, like alcohol. And you need to clean it. Otherwise, you will have this noise and all other tr troubles. If there's a scratch on the lens, is that a problem? Or does no, not at all. Not at all. Because you see, optical system is designed this way that focal plane is below the lens. So it's this surface, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. If you don't change your environment, your location very often, how many times of use, if you stay in the same place, do you suggest you recalibrate? Uh, you see, I suggest maybe once a month. It's enough. If you're staying in the same place? In the same place, yes, yes, yes. In principle, it's necessary if uh, there are change of environment. For example, from uh, winter to spring to summer, then it makes sense. But if it's uh, office environment with the same temperature, with controlled environment, then it's okay. Whether it's 10 scans or 150 scans? Doesn't matter. Doesn't that, this has no effect at all. Good. Okay, yes, very good. Okay, so now let me show you one simple topic. I go to full scan, and I make this scan for metal cylinder. It's scanning the titanium tip, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's scanning titanium cylinder. And you know that in the process of scan, you can uh, use a space bar to click. You don't need to click mouse. Oh, okay. you, you know this. Space bar. space bar, yes. It's more convenient and uh, easier. OK, now I press uh, make analysis. OK, so now let me, let's see. Uh, this guy, he's absolutely healthy. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's his chakras. Look, it is his analysis. Look, it is his health status just in the middle. His energy starts much higher than health status. So I would tell nothing here, yes? And I tell you what, this is the only guy that, that will keep these parameters <laughs> always. The only. I have to admit it's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very often we ask, oh, I measured my chakras 
from time to time, they're changing. Of course, because you are changing. Would you be stable like metal? Then you would have this. So that is very important to understand. If you are uh, in doubts of uh, stability of instrument, you need to measure this subject only. That the only stable person. And then you should have chakras aligned, analysis health in the middle, energy status higher, that's, and balance, of course, zero. All other subjects, those are alive, and they are changing both. So that's why we can have change of parameters. Okay, so that's why now we don't need this stand. And we can take it off. Can it be operated on the stand? Hmm? Does it make a difference? Can you operate the line well on the stand? Uh, yeah, if it's convenient. If it's easier for people to put their fingers uh, in or not. You see, what's uh, important, you can operate with Bywell in any stations. You can keep it in your hands. You can put it somewhere. You can put it on the table. So make it convenient for yourself and for uh, patient. So you don't need to keep it in some position. So make it as, I would say, flexible as possible. I have a question. You may be coming to that later, in which case you can tell me. It's sometimes when you take the reading of the finger, uh, it says, uh, you know, it gives a sign saying it, it was not a perfect reading, try again or something like that. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, would you address that, please? Okay. We are just coming to this topic. Okay. So let's make, I would say, scan of life being myself. Yes? If you don't mind. You see, we, you may have this, uh, yes. yeah, you may have some uh, noise around the image on the background. It doesn't make, it's not influencing at all. It's just the, um, I would say, presentation. Different devices, they have different uh, levels. Some show very clear, some show uh, not very clear, but it doesn't make sense. It's no difference. Okay, now please pay attention to several moments. First moment, this is in the noise. Look, it's in here. You see? Yes. For some patients, it may be totally red inside. In my case, it's only a little bit and only in little fingers. Yes. For some patients, maybe all of this. This is very important, um, I would say, diagnostic indication. I would say diagnostic because we understand the meaning. Uh, this is indication of very high energy activity of the system. And um, I always look, take it as very troubleshooting indication. Because as we've been discussing, first stage of many serious problems, it is very high energy activity. So if you see this red inside, on one finger or on all of them mostly, then you need to be very careful. And uh, I will show you examples. Uh, we may have a bright energy field for very bad disease because again, it's activity. For example, when we are measuring terminally, terminally ill patients, we typically have very low energy. Then at some moment, it's start glowing. Terminally ill. Terminally ill. Yeah, okay. in hospice. Yes. And uh, typically it comes two, three days before death. Or in sometimes one day before death. High energy. Very high energy. Very high. And people very agitated. They feel, oh, I'm, I'm recovering, very good. So I'll go home. Then they die. So it's like final uh, fight of the body. Sometimes, for example, with children hospital, oncology hospital, they have this as a crisis, and then they may recover, really. So it's, it's, it's a crisis that, uh, you know, we know in medicine, so people come through this crisis. It's, of course, it's all related to, when I tell energy, I can, we can, of course, um, attenuate some medical parameters. What do we mean by this? And we understand this, I hope. There are beautiful book of uh, Len Wisniewski, Dr. Len Wisniewski, that, uh, that gives us interrelation between activity of endocrine system and energy. And uh, so it's very detailed over there. So, Scientific basis of integrated medicine. Yeah, absolutely. And there's two volumes. Mm -hmm, yeah. 
Mm. Dr. Leonard Snevsky. Okay, so it's clear that we pay attention if we have this mark. Then you see, here it's green, here it's red. So uh, system automatically define if something is not very good. It may be either wrong position of a finger or some external light or sometimes uh, for some people it is some type of inner reflection. So physically uh, we have some ideas why it may be so, but it's only for some people. So that's why you can have these uh, spots somewhere, dots. So what we do? We have two options. First, if you see something is not very clear, understandable, please repeat measurement. Uh, and very often we, uh, I take 10 fingers, I see, oh, this I don't like. Okay, let's repeat it. Because the first thing we need to ask from patient, we need to position finger in the appropriate way. That's why very often uh, what I do, I open this uh, uh, insert and I show them, okay, look, this is a glass inside, you see. You need to put your finger on the glass and it should stay on the tip, like this. Without your fingernail. Not like this, but on the tip. And, uh, of course, uh, we need to try to put it in the middle of the glass. And then we have ideal picture. Uh, the question, if we have, uh, for example, autistic children, if we have babies, if we have uh, people uh, who are in coma or something, then we do it a different way. We take this off, we take finger of a patient, we apply it, then we cover it with some cloth, and we take picture. So, but this uh, you need to have a um, person who can, who would not influence the readings. For example, uh, children, they are very sensitive to people. If there are someone, uh, for example, doctor, and they will be afraid of this doctor, some children they do, then of course you will get some nonsense. So it's better if you train, if you teach uh, their parents how to do this then they will do it. You understand this? Okay, so one way, if we, when we uh, repeat measurement, it's one way. Other way around, if we just make correction. So we do it from time to time as well. And you see this little sign here, pencil. You press this sign, you have this image. And you just make, you the eliminate noise. Just like in Photoshop or something like this and save and close. You see, now it's uh, How good. do you do that again? Oh. I press this button, look, oh, look, look. Yes, yes, look at the button. And then I just, uh, as, as any, um, I would say, uh, program. It's like Photoshop. It's like a Photoshop, it's like, it's a razor. Yeah, yes, 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 it's a razor. Yes, absolutely. Like in Photoshop. Yeah. You might be able to see that there's a light gray outside border. Uh, no, it's not, not, black, not seen here. Racing. Not seen here on the screen, but I, I can see it on my computer. You see, and it comes immediately. Yeah. So, same here. So you just erase extra noise. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, because sometimes with some patients it's easier to do it this way, then uh, try to ask them to uh, position properly. For some people it's very difficult, mostly for elderly people, for uh, disabled people. But if the noise is on the inside of the circle, you wouldn't do this. Uh, no, no, again, you need to be careful and see what's going on. And then you need to understand whether it is noise just somehow or it's related to a patient. For this, of course, you need some experience. But after some time, you will feel it. It's very... So, Constantine, look, looking at the left forefinger, you look at the angle of inclination. Mm -hmm. The angle of inclination, up to what angle have you factored that it's acceptable to get a, to get a uh, accuracy of reading? Uh, you see, in principle, uh, this bio well designed this way, so you can't change this angle uh, very much. It's fixed. That's why the, uh, this optical system has some inclination. So it's specially designed for this. It may be a little bit, but not much. The only uh, mistake, maybe if people try to put finger very deep inside and try to push or just to put it on uh, the surface, then of course it will be different, but you will see it. So, mm -hmm. the line that we're 
the line. learned about the line uh -huh. that gives us the orientation of being, whether it's straight up or... Uh, no, it's, it's totally automatic, so it's again, it defines automatically. So it used to be that in the GDB, or it is in the GDB Pro, right, where it matters for the position of where you have the, the finger, like on the clock. Mm -hmm. So here it's not, does it matter? Uh, it doesn't matter because it's totally automatic system and it's uh, non-significant here. Okay, so is the line there for what purpose then? It is just uh, for, I would say, uh, when we make mathematical calculations, then we need That's to know this. Yes, okay, yes, so absolutely. So it's a way of there being a like a north-south compass. Yes, absolutely, you know absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and you see, we have some uh, images without noise, some with noise, it doesn't matter. It's all just uh, appearance, how it looks like. So it's, don't pay attention to this at all. We pay attention only to the inner noise. That is inside. <coughs> that is significant. So then I press analysis. And you see, it takes me just couple of seconds to have everything. <coughs> okay, so now let's make this analysis. Um, you can see uh, uh, some organ systems like this. You understand this? Or, uh, of course, you see there are images inside, but we don't see it here, it doesn't matter. But I prefer to do as follows. I go step by step. Uh, sorry, before you go there, uh, that we have the left, right, and uh, front. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me uh, the meaning of that? No, wait, 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 wait. I want to show you how we, how I am doing analysis, step by step. Okay. Then we go, then we come. So first I open this program, analysis. Because this program, it allows us to understand whether this person has normal parameters or deviation to some line. And you see, we have stress level from 2 to 4. It is standard. Uh, this is below or above. And uh, below from 0 to 2. It may be either very, very balanced person in the process of meditation, that's possible, or other way around. It may be stagnation. So. So here, it's, you read it as stagnation in the GDB Pro is a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. So here it's more accurate. So you see, we, we are using same algorithms that I developed many years ago, but here we were able to define all details and to make everything. So that's why uh, BioWell programs, they are more accurate than GDB programs because it's next level of development. So what, from four to six, it is just excitation level. For example, for uh, management in the process of during the day, they may have some five something like this, even to six. For military personnel, we worked a lot. In the process of activity, again, they may have five, six. Athletes, uh, before competition, they may have five, six. So it's normal. More than six, it is uh, stress. And we pay attention to this as a stress. More than eight, it is very strong stress where any other type of analysis is impossible. Just impossible. Because stress, it is a blockage of all the body, of all the systems. Uh, we are based on informational transfer from different parts of the body, through meridians to fingers. Strong stress, it totally blocks all this information. information. Because I come from, you know, the Ewing tests for autonomic ner nervous system testing and all that. Yeah, I'm trying to understand, because I know kind of this is a little bit like galvanic skin response, but I'm just trying to understand, I'm not seeing anybody stressed on this system. So I'm looking, or we, am I looking at a different kind of stress than maybe I see in other kinds of testing? Okay, so maybe, let me... Maybe it's my calibration. Yes, yes, no, no, it's uh, maybe your patience is so good. So, uh, of course, you need to make calibration. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. 
but maybe it's just your patients. For example, I've done measurement of some uh, groups of patients, and they were so good, all of them. Because I'm wondering if, um, you know, there's, if I'm looking at just a different kind of stress, you know, because people that are very stressed out in their life you see. at that moment. That That's, shocked. look, this is example of stress. So, uh, in analysis, we have 6, 33, and low energy. Mm -hmm. We're talking physiological stress or something? Physiological, no. It's a clear physiological stress, it's not psychological. So, psychological is different. Yeah, we, we, t we talk about physiological stress. Another example, even more clear, you see. Image look like this, and if we have the analysis... Which is interesting that you can be high stress and low energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Someone but stressed is stress energy. Uh, no, no, no. It's no. Uh, you see, what um, it's absolutely. If people under stress, they always have low energy, because um, it seems to be that they can do something. But in reality, no. It's very well known from physiology, because stress it is blockage of all energy transfer in the body. People can uh, in strong stress they can jump once or run away in short time, but then they fell off and will be laying down. So, yeah, balance may be normal. It's 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 different story. It's different yeah. again. Well, so, we so hmm? we'll yeah, absolutely, going absolutely, of course, of course. So you see, this is example of stress. <coughs> then, um, another example of stress. Here we have uh, four seventy. This is acceptable. No. Hmm? The level of stress? Yeah. How does it relate to the chakras, out of curiosity? Ah, uh, OK, look. You can still be in alignment. Uh, used to, people may be in alignment, absolutely. Why not? Here it is misaligned. In, it may be. But look, they are very little. They are very, very little, yes. Yeah. I've seen sociopaths be in complete alignment. Mm -hmm. Another example, here it is 636, and chakras, you see, they are little, and so it's uh, different um, features, chakras and uh, stress. So, Constantine, this was a question from Pravi. Mm -hmm. Is there, can, how does one differentiate between chronic stress and just implied stress. Okay, what we, how we can differentiate? When we have patient with high level of stress, we ask them, okay, please sit here, drink some warm tea and uh, balancing tea, not coffee, of course, and relaxing music, uh, fish tank with fish, and please sit we, because we need to wait. And then if you see transformation, after half an hour, then it means it's just current stress of something. Plus, of course, we discuss with people what's going on. And because uh, very important, first topic, uh, we don't need to guess. We are not, uh, I would say, psychic people who see everything transparent. We don't want to guess uh, what's going on. We need to discuss with people to help them. It's the first. Second, please believe in what you are measuring, but not in appearance. Very often, young guy coming strong, powerful, like this, beautiful looking, we are measuring nothing, chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. Very typical. You know that it is very dangerous situation now. You know that uh, suicide rate in young population, tremendous. And the more I would say uh, well-developed countries, the highest this rate. The highest may be in Australia, in Switzerland, in Sweden, because they have very uh, good, well-organized life. And young people, they don't feel their aim in life. They don't understand their spiritual meaning. And for them it's, and they don't understand the meaning of life, the value of life. So for them it's just to kill themselves somehow. You know that in Australia, this is uh, this uh, rubber jumping. It's very popular, 
and uh, it is forbidden to make it in Australia. Forbidden, it's uh, against the law to involve in the wilderness. But still people go there somewhere in the mountains and they jump, risking their life, because they don't have enough level of activity. So uh, that is, again, very important. Please believe in your measurement. How would it manifest the tendency for suicide? A level of stress, high level of stress. High level of stress. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. It's all related. Same as depression, typically. But I would imagine the balance would be off, right? Uh, I don't know. It depends. It depends. It's uh, every person is individual, mm -hmm. so you never know what would be. Mm -hmm. Stress should go up and down, kind of like heart rate variability, right? I mean, it's not something. If you see somebody stay between an eight and a ten, it's a, it's a warning. Yeah, of course, of course, sure, if you sure. see somebody go in and out to an occasional four to six. Uh, it may be a warning as well and very serious because um, I had a situation once uh, in Australia, in Melbourne. It was one lady and uh, we took her measurements uh, from time to time. One day she's beautiful. Beautiful, energy is wonderful. Next day, total disorder. Stress, very high. Again, and I felt, oh, do you feel something? Do you have? No, no, everything's fine. Next day again. Then finally, finally, after three months, I was gone, and I had a message, a letter, that she, this lady, she tried to kill her husband from, just from nothing. And then they found that she is mentally ill. So, yeah, so it was clear from our measurements, and I, was, I suspected this. But from her behavior, it was impossible to tell. But finally, of course, it resolved in a situation like this. Okay. Hmm. I just want to make sure that I have you know, complete confidence in this. So if, if, let's say, we're doing heart rate variability and the Valsalva and the Cape and y'all doing all that kind of measurement, and they show up as high stress, and it's not showing there, then that's probably OK stress. But if it's showing up on there, that's serious. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so that's showing something even more so than what that kind of Absolutely, but typically we have a uh, very good correlation uh, okay, so in I'm most cases. Yeah, I just haven't had time to test that, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. okay. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, of course, we always, it's possible to prefer to use several technologies in parallel. Yeah. And then if they coincide, then it's really strong conclusion. Yes, everything that we are measuring is addressing physiological parameters, because physiological parameters, they are strongly influenced by a mental state. You see, our body, it is reflection of our mind for everyone, uh, while people are alive. That's why we are measuring from physiological parameters, but we are under the influence of mental state. Understandable. Uh, you know that in GDV, uh, we uh, had a lot of use of filters. Mm -hmm. So now we are in the process of production filters for biowell. And uh, I hope that in a month they will be ready and we'll put it on sale. So it will be absolutely the same. But with filters, I recommend you to use stand. Because filters should lay on flat on the surface. And then with stand, then it's OK. Without stand, it will be distortion. Moving, yeah, it will be moving. Fall into the yeah, it will fall off. Uh, say that again. You said you're in the process of developing a filter? So we are in the process of preparation of production of filter. Filters? Filters, yes. You mean like in GDV? Like in GDV. Okay, okay. So. But there was a reason they were not produced in the first, in, originally. Uh, no, originally because we didn't have stand by that moment. Without stand, it, it makes a lot of distortion, so we decided to postpone it a little bit. And then it was another idea only for consumers, so it's historical process now. <laughs> now we're in the process, it will be ready soon. Okay, now it's with filter, it's understandable. Then everything that is written about filter in books and papers, that will be uh, applicable. Be yeah, absolutely. That's a big question with all of this, because there's so much that we look at. Different yes, 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 absolutely. So it will okay. be ready. I was wondering if you had combined somehow a parasympathetic and a sympathetic state with the algorithms versus how we looked at it with the filter. Mm -hmm. No, we it's did not. Do that. No, 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 no. Okay, so. Now, uh, please have a look. We have a uh, very good energy, energy field, but if you look at the analysis, you see very low energy. Again, 
that is a very good, very important indication. Every program, it has its own measurement. So just from image like this, you can't define all features. Only when you use all the programs one by one, then you can really make good conclusions. So again, first program that I use, this is program of analysis. <coughs> and I look to this program first. And if it's in between, that's OK. Of course, it will be variation, of course. For example, if we are measuring one and the same per person during the day, it will be some cycle. Then, of course, we have this chakra screen with different chakras. And we have biorhythms. You see this button. Um, uh, soon we'll make another design, so it will be a big uh, button. Now it's at the bottom. <laughs> so we found that many people, they don't see what does mean, but still. So uh, biorhythm, it is a very interesting program that uh, calculated uh, in, from the moment of birth. So to have biorhythm active, Wait, 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 wait. I am explaining everything by step by step. Okay. So you need to have, uh, you know, this is little button. You press this button and you have a card of a patient. You can add something in this card. For example, you can change name, you can change male, female, anywhere. You can, you can add some notes. And uh, to uh, show biorhythms, we need to have the date of birth. It's obligatory. To this card, you can add a picture of a person if you need. So then it will, it will show up. So without date of birth, biorhythm is impossible. That's why I will tell for every patient, you need at least uh, gender and date of birth. So if we look to this biorhythm screen, we see there are three um, levels, three cycles, physical, emotional, and intellectual. And this was designed by psychologists in the uh, mid 20th century. And there are some papers, books on this. So it's, it's not precise, but it's quite good. I would say so. So it's not precise definition that all oh, at this particular day, your uh, intellectual level will be at zero. No, of course not. It's just evaluation. Where we pay attention to? We pay attention when two cycles come together at the bottom. That is really significant. At this moment, when any of two cycles come together at the bottom, then uh, it means that people lose their attention. They uh, may feel much worse than usually. And typically what I suggest when I see this, I suggest people, if you drive, either don't drive in those days at all, or be very, very careful. I, first I found on myself, I get tickets from the police. I am driving and then I break the rules somehow without mentioning this. Uh, I'm stopped. Oh, in Russia, we, have, we are lucky, we pay on this uh, just on the spot. We bribe them. <laughs> so it's, it's normal. <laughs> yeah. So and then I, I drive on. Uh, but then I found that it was mostly in the days when I had biorhythms down. So attention is scattered, and then you make mistakes. So it's absolutely clear. Uh, and of course, it can influence to other behavior as well. So that is why if we take measurement of one and the same person during the day, we may have variation. Some people more stable, some people less stable. Mostly on chakra level. We may have strong variation that people that claim, oh, I am measuring myself and it's always different. Okay, because you are different. You are unstable. M take measurement of this titanium guy and he will be stable. That is very- That's a seminar by itself. <laughs> How to be a titanium electron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a different story. <laughs> We can make it some of the weekends. <laughs> okay. Do you differentiate when the 
the two cycles, so this is physical and emotional that are touching versus intellectual cycle, do you do something different? No, of course, when it's just physical and something, then it's not, not that important for intellectual activity. Okay. When it is intellectual and emotional, then it's more important. It has more yeah. weight. Yes, okay. but still it is indication, it's not just uh, pinpoint, it's indication. Mm -hmm. And so, when the bar rhythms are high, that's like good, good days? Very good. The good days, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mostly of two of them are high, then it's very good days. So, is this a determinant already from the point of your birth? Yes. Or can it be redefined? Uh, with your mind power, you can redefine ever anything in your life. Okay. See, so now all you have to do is go yeah. to your astrological readings and really yeah. get some. Which is, it's just a day on the horizontal axis, right? Yes, absolutely. It's 30 so days. Day in, of each month. Day of month. Day of each month? No, you see. September. Now it's written here. September, from September 1 to September 30. I see, okay. That's you see, it's over there. And of course, you can define it, for example, for October. Let's see what will be in October. And you see it. what's in September, so you can uh, see uh, at any moment of your... It's defining your cycle. Different cycle, yes, for any moment of your life. Back and forth, so it's... Yeah. I've been utilizing this with people like who are really decision makers to pay attention to this chart. So if they're going to be in a meeting, and if their curves, like their intellectual curve, and even their physical curve may be at the bottom range, be aware gives one the perception of how to transmit and convey. Yeah. So it can be utilized in a very affirmative manner, utilizing this chart. Okay, so that's understandable. Now, uh, typically I go next to this program, it's health status. And health status shows us a uh, relative position of all organs and systems. And you see, we have this green zone, not on this projector, but it's, it's green in reality. And this is a most beneficial zone, statistically, for the particular age group. So for this guy, when he's in green zone, that's really beneficial. And we compare this with energy status. So for healthy people, energy status, should be bigger than health status. And the bigger it is, the more energy potential of a person. Bigger is in the outer range. Yes, absolutely. So let me show, for example, some example. Um, let's see what we have here. Health status, energy status. It is bigger. Back. Health status, energy status. Yeah, so it is, and you will see that for many patients it may be energy status may be way off. So it is really very good indication. When it's lower, again, let me show you some examples. So this indication of very high energy. You see, this is negative indication. So in principle, energy status, uh, health status, it uh, helps us to define uh, some organs and systems that need attention. But in energy status, it's much more clear. How does this person's analysis look like? So, uh, uh, very excited uh, level of stress, normal level of energy. Uh, in uh, balance, uh, most of people, they are in normal range. 
But if there are below normal range, this is indication of very strong misbalance in activity of the body. And you know that we are uh, not symmetrical, but the more we are uh, symmetrical, the more we are balanced. That's why if you look to um, st stages of ancient Greece, a lot of them, they are absolutely symmetrical and they look beautiful. If you take most of people, 99.999%, and you to put together two left side and two right side with two different people. And it's, there are programs that allow us to do this. Status is based on the L status is based on the organs and systems. The energy status is based on the amount of energy in mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. Yes, 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 absolutely. So, again, in health status, we pay attention to deficiency mm -hmm. and to excess. And, and if we excess, hmm? excess, excess, excess yes, mm -hmm. so and the the deficiency. deficiency, yes, yes, yes. So, but uh, we, uh, as we've been discussing, both are important, both deficiency and excess. This is a good time to say anything about the difference between right and left. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So we'll tell this. Okay, so uh, in clinical practice, it is much easier to deal with deficiency than with excess. Mm -hmm. There are many, many uh, treatments that allows to increase uh, deficiency. So if you have some deficiency somewhere, and then you know that uh, in this particular area, for example, this is area of thyroid gland. Okay, so we know what where to pay attention to. And mostly if we have this same presentation from both sides, that's the most important. And access, for example, here we have sacrum area, and we pay attention to the sacrum area. Uh, I, it's uh, no. You see, then you need to understand what does it mean. At the moment, we are going step by step, and we define which organs a system needs attention. Then we need to understand what's going on. That's why, as I've told, we need to go step by step to all the programs, not just to be on one program. Uh, so again, the energy status typically it shows us much more clear. Uh, situation of uh, organs that need attention. Constantine, sorry, did you say that excess is more difficult to treat or deficiency? Yeah, absolutely, excess, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. If there's an excess in an organ, is it the same meaning as saying that someone has excess energy and that could be a problem? Yeah, so absolutely. Excess in a specific May organ, be a problem. Yes, be a problem yes absolutely, absolutely. So negative. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. deficiency it could also be a problem. But in, uh, over you see, we need to understand it from a physiological point of view. What does it mean physiologically? Energy, access, and what's over. First of all, we are based on microcirculation of blood. And we are based on measuring energy. What does it mean energy? It is activity of mitochondria. What is the basis of activity of mitochondria? It is oxygen and electrons. So electrons we transfer mostly through connective tissues. Oxygen, those are blood circulation. So um, first of all, we need to support, uh, supply with oxygen our brain. So it should be, it takes most of oxygen. Then all other organs. So if people, for example, have uh, a very high cholesterol level, then they will have blockage in microcirculation. And in some uh, specific instruments, you can see this, really physically see this blockage. Of course, if it is big thrombs, then of course you can see it in uh, mammography or cardiography. Uh, then, but it's microcirculation, it's only specific instruments. But it's very interesting to watch it. So if there are a lot of blockages of this kind, then typically it will be related to uh, deficiency of energy. Because these are blocks, energy blocks. Uh, for example, uh, and it may be related to, uh, uh, let me see, 
let me find someone okay yes it's a good example look we have very big gap here and here as well it is typical blockage but this is related not with only blood circulation but with uh, vertebras of spinal cord we have very several very typical uh, problems for most of European population typical problems first of all those are thyroid gland very typical for many people you can find some um, I would say misbalancing uh, in the thyroid. Very typical. And this related to type of food mostly. This related to water in particular. And uh, if you define it, of course, you need to recommend person to go to some extra analysis and to make uh, ultrasound, uh, to make uh, uh, thyroid hormone and to see what's going on. So now this becomes the question of how do you suggest that to somebody you, after studying their beer, their beer brain? Uh, after every um, I would say discussion, after every analysis, we write recommendations. So we recommend this, this, this type of analysis. Right. You're not specifying because of the bio because the whole battery... No, no, it's, it. no it's, it, it's, we recommend this test. Why? Of course, we don't need to explain patient what we see over there, how, how we make this analysis. We just de define, okay, we recommend you this, this, and this. And there are a list of typical recommendations for every age. So in principle, it's possible to go typical, but this helps. For example, for this guy, 100% sure problems in vertebras, 100%. No, no, it's, it's absolutely different. Okay. Uh, most probable it would reflect on digestive tract okay. system. Yes, 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 because the most likely. Of course, it depends not only on coffee, but on water. What type of water they drink and how, what's the amount of water they drink. Because right? we so understand. We the value of the juice in the kidneys, liver... Yes, 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 absolutely, 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 yes, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. if I may, just another example, when we're talking about how to diagnose or look at things, um, when you see a deficiency such as this, when you're really not sure where it's coming from, and Dr. Dr. Barkov keeps saying, talk to the patient, talk to the client, get a full spectrum, a holistic view of what's going on. Just for a dumb example, I did a scan on my mother. And without wanting, to, and I'm taking this class because even though I've been in the community for many years, I've never had to actually do the science behind it, so now I'm learning. But I saw my mother's scan, and I saw her gallbladder area was really deficient. Like, holy God, there's going to be a problem here. I didn't want to say that to her. And I don't, I'm not a professional. These guys know something. So, but I mentioned as we were going along, I'm just talking with Leah, and I said, yeah. And, and she started seeing that there was a gap, breaks. And she said, well, what is that? Smell? It's your gallbladder. She's like, you know, I don't know. Not professional reason. She goes, Oh, yeah, remember I had that taken out years ago. Oh, yeah. All right. So, I mean, by talking to the patient, by talking to the client, you can get a lot more insight to understand what you see so that maybe no one's alarmed about anything. That's interesting. Uh, so, coming back to that analysis, I think you tried to answer it, but I missed it. Is if for the same organ, you see that the right is showing okay, the left is showing something deficient or something, how do you understand the right and left? Okay, now we go to balance program. Now first we go overview, then we can come to analysis. This is really very, very important program for analysis. Because uh, as we discuss, in principle, our system should operate in unison. And it means that all organ systems should exchange information and they should work 
uh, in uh, appropriate way. Misbalance, it is first indication of strong uh, misinformation uh, in the system. For example, uh, if your left kidney works okay, but left uh, right kidney doesn't work at all properly, then of course it will be strong misbalance. Same uh, with lungs, for example. Left lung, right lung. So here in this program, we see indication they highlighted organs and systems which need attention. Again, what our aim of the analysis? To find out which organs and systems need our attention. It's not, uh, that's why, again, I tell that it's not diagnosis. Because we need to maybe put a list of, and uh, typically uh, in the beginning people do it like this, they put a list, and then we define what's important, what's not. Just, just curious, like, so number 12 is the uh, coccyx pelvis minor zone on the right side, the left mm -hmm. side looks good. No, is that right? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the right side mm -hmm. is very under. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be anything in that region, on that right side, right? Yeah, and we understand from medical point of view. Typically, it is some uh, misalignment of vertebra. Oh, okay. It's yeah. very typical. Okay. Because vertebra, it's very clear, it is uh, all related to physical situation because, you see, vertebra, it is a uh, main regulator of autonomic uh, nervous activity. So it's main. So all this nervous system we have over there. So if it is misalignment, somehow it may influence more or less. Uh -huh. So how about the liver number four? Number four, it is liver. Or 15, because you're looking, the liver, at least you do have a right and versus a left mm -hmm. kind of part. Yeah, right you see, for example, it's a good example of liver, thank you. Uh, that is uh, really, you see, one part is active, other part is suppressed. So, in principle, it may work properly if people don't eat something wrong. But if they eat wrong food, then, of course, they will have troubles and Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a lot of information. Very negative effect. Yes. yes. And devastating effect, I would say. It's devastating effect. We have many data on this and uh, we have papers published that, uh, you see, all chemicals, uh, of course, sometimes we need medications. If people have surgery, they need to have antibiotics after this. But then, of course, you need to go on probiotics and to restore uh, and uh, here in um, health uh, stores, you can find big, big variety of probiotics. For example, I have a child, uh, grandson, he's uh, two years old. He had big problems with uh, digestive system. We uh, found probiotics for him. After a month, everything's fine. So it's absolutely, and it was shown up on uh, his readings. He's a miniature constant. I'm married to a chiropractor and I work with chiropractors a lot so I'm seeing some practical application here like when Tiffany said number 15 I'm seeing that maybe on the right side of some of the cervicals that that is the area where probably if they palpate the, or x-ray mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're going to find that they need to adjust on the right side and it could be that simple because, of course, it's going to affect the organ function. Absolutely, areas, absolutely, so absolutely. I'd like to maybe do a little study on that. Yes, 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 absolutely. It's very important. And even more than that, on X-ray, you may find nothing significant. If you they make MRI, then it will show you misalignment. Mm -hmm. But then it may be, I would say, that, oh, look, you have misalignment. You have so many uh, different blo uh, physical blockage. But again, it's, it's, it's normal. All people more uh, older than 20, they have some misalignment in spine. Uh, very important to uh, 
train children to have their spine normal. You know that um, uh, dancers, military people, they have posture, and it's very important. Most of people, they like this, and it it's, has tremendous impact, tremendous, on all organs and systems. So that's why we need to teach children how to posture themselves. The best way to teach children to send them to dancing, that's the best way. Uh, of course, more cruel way just to push them <laughs> and also, beat them. Regular visits for chiropractic. Uh, you see, no. you need to walk by yourself, not by chiropractor. First of all, you need you're trying to do yourself something, mm -hmm. exercising, uh, follow up what you have. Uh, then it's important. Chiropractic is good, of course, it's very good. Especially for kids who play sports, they're getting banged around and moving around. They may have good posture normally, but if they're getting knocked around a lot. Absolutely. But I agree with you, you know, you don't rely on the chiropractor yeah. for the alignment. You go there to help correct and remind the body to mm -hmm. do that, and then you do the maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, get, I, mm -hmm. agree, I agree with that. Yeah. So, again, it is very typical situation when we, he, when we see this, some problems in spine. And then, of course, it may have influence on internal activity. For example, liver is very closely connected to this. So it's very uh, often like this. Another, as I've told, it is uh, thyroid. Again, many, many uh, people may have this situation. And in conventional analysis, it may be just at the boundary, but it's functional. Uh, when we make conventional analysis, very often some parameters are on the boundaries, and it's considered normal. But in functioning process, it may create problems. We understand this. So that is why. Can when, I ask you a yes, 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 please. Imbalances. The ones that are faded in the background are normal. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then when you do have an imbalance with the bars, how do you determine, you know, how badly out of balance or... You, know, uh, you see, uh, you see, uh, for example, here it is huge difference between left and right. Right. And here it is not that big difference. Mm -hmm. So 15, it is... Uh, uh, throat, trachea, so it's some, some misbalance, but not very strong. But in, in liver, it's strong, so big difference. And so what does it mean when they're high, and then what does it mean when they're low? It means that functionally, one part of the uh, organs take all activity, and other parts are idle. And it's, uh, it creates functional uh, problems. So when person uh, when the system functions properly it should be balanced and the more balanced it is the better activity for example i can give you an example for our astronauts in the process of uh, in the process of preparation this measurement is most important because they are practically apparently healthy people of course they are not selected anyway but uh, if there are some strong misbalance, it is indication that they may break down its un underloading. In looking at number one, heart, the right side is lower than the left. How do we know whether the left is excess and the, or the right is too low? How do we know whether they should meet? Okay, then uh, we um, take into account this program. If we go to next program, health status. And we look to health status. So we see this is sacrum area. And it's confirmation of what we've seen over there. Yes. We see <coughs> it is uh, no, liver. Again, it's absolutely clear confirmation. Again, it's very strong deficiency. Uh, uh, look here. Uh, colon system. Blind gut, again, very strong deficiency. Which, so, which one is where's heart? So I can see. Uh, we look to cardiovascular system. Cardio? Okay, yeah. So what do we see? We see it's quite high activity from this side, from right side. Then we go to this side, 
cardiovascular system, again very high activity. Then what's important, we go to fingers. Because fingers those are the main indication. And uh, on fingers we see, first of all, we pay attention to inner noise, what we mentioned. You see inner noise. And this indication of some very active uh, uh, process that is, of course, indication of some inflammation. So it is absolutely clear from here, this particular person has very strong inflammation. And let me see who is it. Inflammation. Where the, where the right is low and the left was the high. There is no set balance as to, okay, the heart should be between here and here. No, 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 you see. Because everyone's different. Uh, no, 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 you, you see. Again, let's be, make it very clear. This program shows us what is good and what is bad for every organ and system. If they are in middle range, then it's really very good, good health status. If it is deficiency, it shows up like here, deficiency. Then uh, we go to energy status and we see some peaks that we need to pay attention to. So for example, uh, here you see thyroid gland. We pay attention to this, it's excess. We have here, it is hypothalamus. Again, we look here. Ascending colon, we look here, hypothalamus again, uh, nervous system, let's recall uh, that. So uh, it is clear that this particular person uh, has many symptoms, and for sure he has many symptoms. They are related, first of all, to this strong misbalance of activity. A stress level is not that high, that high so it's not emotional. It's, not, uh, it's uh, some physiological stress, but it's not high. So it means that there are some physical processes in the body. And then we need to understand what's the process. So in this case, what I would do, I would define, okay, all these misbalances, and I will write a list. Then I would look to this deficiency and I put it on the list. Then energy status and I put peaks like this on the list. And then I would write this list and then say, okay, we recommend you to make this, this, this particular analysis. Then of course we discuss with patient. Typically when we have people uh, coming to the center, they have uh, some questionnaire. And typical, it's a typical World Health Questionnaire for health status. And that's a normal questions related to health. I'm sorry to belabor it. I just mm -hmm. try to understand it. In looking at cardio on the energy status, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the lines would indicate in the green a little. It's mostly in the green, mm -hmm. okay? On the left. And on the right, the cardio is still mostly in the green. Mm -hmm. So by looking at the energy status, they look like they should be normal. Mm -hmm. We go to health, to health status, please. Mm -hmm. No, cardio on one health, side no. is it's health status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, health status is no, absolutely so normal. You have the cardio here is also mm -hmm. mostly yeah. normal, but when you go to balance, absolutely. So it means that it's not that I would say serious. It's not the main system that takes our. Uh, so that's what you're saying. You write everything down. And then yeah, you absolutely, look. absolutely. So maybe in this instance, the cardio, the heart is not necessarily. It's not uh, the main uh, danger. It's not the main attention. Okay. Not the cardio in here. Okay. It is some, but you see, it may be a reflection of all other. Pro I, in this case, I pay attention first of all to uh, colon system, and this is of course related to related to. Uh, we need to define maybe it's even serious process in colon system up to cancer. It's quite possible because, you know, we have uh, several types of cancer that is typical for different types of population. And for women, it is uh, breast cancer. It's typical. Um, for uh, then uh, ovary cancer. For men, it is prostate that we pay attention to always. And uh, for both, it is colon system. You know that it is recommended to make 
colon analysis once a year, recommended after 45, 50 years old. Because it may be polypus, then uh, it's okay, but still, but any, even polyps, they can develop into malignant tumor. So it's better to remove them. And see, here it's typical example, very typical. So it, I don't, it has nothing to do with heart in this case, but it absolutely clear correlated with spine and colon system. Then it's reflected, of course, to liver, as we've seen. And we have disbalance in liver. Uh, uh, very typically, people of this type have symptoms. You know, that uh, bad uh, uh, colon activity, uh, very unstable. Maybe it is after using some antibiotics. So again, you need to understand. You, f you see what is going on. And then you understand why. That's and then you need to understand what should be done. So it's step by step. Okay.